the panelists who are in session five. Um, the panel discussion is on, the panel session is on treasury management and Sharia compliant instruments. The moderator and presenter at the, uh, of the panel is Sayed Amir Ali. Um, Sayed Amir Ali is the head of investment banking at Mizan Bank Limited. If I could also have the panelists, Mohammed Ayoub, who is the director of research and training at Rifa International University. Mr. Zahid Mansoor, who is the head of treasury at the Dubai Islamic Bank. Mr. Muhammad Ali Malik, who is the Director of Domestic Markets and Monetary Management at State Bank of Pakistan. Hashim Khan Hoti, who is the Country Head Islamic Bank um, at Askari Bank Limited. And Aziz Adil, who is the Head of Treasury Islamic Banking Group at Bank Kalfala Limited. Once we have the panelists seated, and after we give them a round of applause, then it's over to you. It's always a... <laughs> All right, sir, over to you. Thank you, Rabia, and assalamu alaikum. Uh, can you hear me, I think? Uh, so the, the session five, which is the last session for today, is on treasury management and Sharia compliant instrument, which currently is a very important uh, aspect for uh, the Islamic banking industry, or the, a very important arena for the Islamic banking industry. Uh, now, treasury management in a typical commercial bank, treasury management involves the asset liability management, FX desk, equity desk, derivatives, and the money market. But the core is the asset and liability management, which is the liquidity management. And it is pretty evident from the last financial crisis, which we had in 2007, 2008, that those banks who have an efficient liquidity management framework in place were able to sail through. So that was the factor determining the success and failure of banks across the globe. So definitely it's a key factor for Islamic banks as well. Now liquidity risk as defined by the International Standard Accounting Board, there are different definitions, state, there are definition for state bank, I like that definition so I picked it up. Liquidity risk is the risk that an entity will encounter difficulty in meeting associated, in meeting obligations associated with financial liabilities that are settled by delivering cash or in other financial assets. So there are certain obligations which an entity or a financial institution has to meet and for that it has either to dish out a cash or has to deliver certain other financial asset. The underlying principle for asset liability management is matching your assets and liabilities. So you have to ensure a balance between the asset side of the balance sheet and the liability side of the balance sheet. So this is the job which is entrusted to the treasury management in the bank. So what treasury do in a bank is, if there is an increase in liabilities, it generates assets, means it puts money in the interbank market, it invests money in the treasury bills or certain other short term instruments available in the market. Uh, decrease in liabilities like this outflow deposit, then they have to sell assets to generate liquidity or in case of increase in assets or decrease in liabilities, they also have to borrow from the interbank market. And in case of increase in assets, in, in case of certain transactions where you are do, doing project finance, you are doing commitments on a, for working capital financing with your borrow, with your clients, then definitely you need funds as committed by you under different financial agreements. Then you generate liabilities by borrowing from the interbank market. Now this is a recent study conducted by Deloitte Middle East and according to that recent 2010 study, uh, the, the Deloitte has worked out through a perceptual survey of the leading Islamic banking professionals that liquidity ratio is the most important ratio in determining the sustainability of any Islamic bank. Now going on with this that since liquidity management is a very important angle for any Islamic bank to sustain and grow. But there are certain challenges which are currently being faced by Islamic banking industry in general and the Islamic banking industry in Pakistan in particular. And these challenges are there are small number of participants. We all know like there are five full fledged Islamic banks though there are certain windows or 12 windows as well as compared to 37 full fledged commercial banks. So the number of participants dealing in the Islamic interbank market and the, in the Islamic uh, financial instruments are small. Uh, the slow development of Islamic financial instrument, although the government of Pakistan during uh, last two years have rolled out a GOP Ijara Sukuk program which is a three year GOP 
uh, instrument which is SLR eligible is a floating rate instrument uh, which is in the to the tune of approximately 230 40 odd billion rupees are there in the market banks have invested in them but still if you compare it with the total government papers outstanding which is approximately 3 trillion rupees and of that 2 trillion rupees is in treasury bills which are a primary liquidity management instrument available to the conventional counterparts of the Islamic bank. The outstanding GOP Jara Sukuk as of July 2011 is 224.6 billion only. There's a, there, there's a potential in the asset. So they will go for another auction probably and it will end up like 230, 40 odd billion and then we have to find out a new asset or a new structure to roll out more Ajara Sukuks. Now, absence of Islamic secondary market. Since the, the supply of the instrument in the market is not adequate, it's not consistent, and there are limited number of participants, that's why the trading activity as depicted by the data available with the State Amendment of Bank of Pakistan that in the month of August, the trading volumes of the total government securities were 463 billion rupees, and only 6 billion trading was done in the GOP Jara Sukuk. So the trading volumes are also very thin, so this is also corroborated by the uh, available factual data, uh, which is available on the State Bank website, then a very important challenge which need to be sorted out and which is being sorted out is different Sharia interpretations. They are, they are different interpretation, even within the same school of thought, of different transactions by the different Islamic financial institutions. So there is a need to bring in harmony. So this is a key challenge for the development of the uh, interbank markets and the, uh, uh, and the money markets. And then last but not the least that the Islamic banks don't have the Islamic uh, SVP discount window facility which we generally call it lender of last resort. I will call it an Islamic financier of last resort for Islamic banking uh, institution. So this facility is not yet available to the Islamic financial institution posing a great risk to Islamic financial institution in a scenario where there is a run on deposit. We have not yet faced that but it can happen any day. Now, what are the solutions? What are the viable solutions to overcome these challenges? Uh, the, the three broad categories of solution will lie in the availability of the short-term sukuks, standardization of Islamic interbank products, and the availability of state bank Islamic discount window. Now, picking on the first one, which is short-term sukuk, that as mentioned in the uh, earlier sessions by the director of Islamic banking, of State Bank of Pakistan also that consistent supply of these GOP sukooks is very important. Although there are three year program which is a relatively medium, longer to medium sukooks, but there is no proper program ensuring a consistent availability of the instrument in the market. There is also no such program for the short term instrument. So it is extremely important that there is a consistent and adequate supply of short term government jara sukooks and high quality corporate bond which will enable Islamic banks on a sustainable basis to invest their liquidity by providing them enough investment opportunities and then subsequently once they have done investment in the primary market, they can trade in those securities for generating liquidity and managing their liquidity. Currently, uh, we are working with the State Bank of Pakistan this proposal which has been submitted. I will sharing that proposed sukuk structure with you as well for developing, for rolling out a short term government sukuk, which will be a hybrid sukuk, which will be a combination of different transactions. It will be a tradable sukuk uh, and it will be a separate program. The three year Jara sukuk program should run parallel to that. And I, I think there is a need for 12 month sukuk as well because under a Jara structure, we can already, we can easily structure a 12 month sukuk. But for a structuring a shorter 10 or 10 tradable sukuk, we need to work out some different Sharia mechanism and Sharia structure. So I will share that with you. And side by side in Pakistan, we have not yet seen the corporate sukuk issues which are for shorter tenors. By shorter tenor, I mean less than one year. So most of the sukuk which were issued in the early days like in 2007, 8 were longer tenor sukuk. There is no uh, liquidity in those sukuks. But if we, if we manage to arrange uh, short term sukooks which are high quality uh, corporate sukook for shorter tenor they can also be used for managing liquidity as these are used in certain developed territories like US and Europe where corporate sukooks are also used by or corporate bonds are also used by Islamic banks to manage their or even the conventional banks for 
managing their liquidity. Two such examples, the Sukuk, which has recently been advised by Mizan Bank, are Hapco and Capco. I will share the structure of one of that instrument as well, how it's structured. Uh, this is the short-term GOP Sukuk, which has been proposed to State Bank of Pakistan. The mechanism is uh, fairly simple. Uh, there will be a combination of Salam transactions and the Ijara transaction. And each Sukuk will, will, be a combo, it will be a combination of two classes of assets. One is the Salam capital and the other one is a Ijara asset. So each Sukuk will represent a certain proportion of the Sukuk holders investment in Ijara assets and a certain proportion of investments in the Salam assets. Obviously Salam portion will be higher uh, and the Ijara portion will be there in the Sukuk to ensure that the Sukuk remains tradable. So there are certain thresholds which are either defined by the IOF or by the Sharia board of different Islamic financial institution, institutions that need to be uh, uh, adherence of that need to be ensured to ensure that these are tradable. So Sukuk holder will give funds to the Pakistan domestic Sukuk company which is an already incorporated existing entity for rolling out the GOP Ijara Sukuk program. As soon as GOP Pakistan domestic Sukuk company will receive funds, it will invest those funds in Salam transaction and Ijara transaction such that there will be three months Sukuk, six months Sukuk and 12 months Sukuk and each Sukuk representing a proportion of investment in both classes of assets. Now Ijara is like a pretty much uh, common concept now. Every, every Islamic bank is doing Ijara. The three-year three GOP Sukuk is an Ijara Sukuk. So I will not touch upon the Ijara structure. It will be a pretty much generic Ijara structure. But the Salam structure, because for doing a Salam, we need commodity, a commodity in bulk. So there are certain commodities in Pakistan which are available in bulk. One of them is petroleum products, which are imported in bulk, which are handled in bulk. Because when one cargo comes to Pakistan, for furnace oil or diesel or crude, it's 65,000 metric tons. So it's a pretty decent amount. Like PSO imports petroleum products for $300 million per month. Paco imports petroleum products for $200 million per month. So these are substantial volumes and substantial values of the commodities which can be used to structure Salam transactions. So what will happen as soon as the Pakistan domestic, domestic Sukuk company will receive funds it will enter into a Salam contract, a master Salam contract with the government of Pakistan and it will pay the amount received through the auction to the government of Pakistan. So it will be kind of an advanced payment of price which is a pretty normal concept in Salam. Funds will go to the government of Pakistan, government of Pakistan will enter into an agency agreement with Pakistan State Oil Company which is already importing oil for its own needs. So under that agency agreement then PSO will go to the international petroleum product supplier in a routine basis and will procure crude or the petroleum, finished petroleum product on the basis of bill of lading, deliveries can be transferred because by exchanging the bill of lading of a cargo you can transfer ownership and deliveries, pretty much normal, we do in all Murabha transaction Islamic banks. Uh, the, the, the product will be delivered by PSO to the government of Pakistan and the government of Pakistan then deliver that product to Pakistan domestic Sukuk company under the Salam agreement. And immediately, Pakistan Domestic Sukuk Company, which is an agent company for the Sukuk holder, will appoint government of Pakistan as its agent to sell the oil to PSO. The oil is procured from an international petroleum product supplier through PSO, which is acting in the first leg of the transaction as an agent. In the second leg of the transaction, PSO, which is an actual uh, consumer for the petroleum products, will buy that product and then it, it will pay the price to government of Pakistan, which the government of Pakistan on the, on the maturity date will pay to the Pakistan domestic Sukuk company for maturing the Sukuk and the profit and the principal portion both will be paid off. So we can, on the basis of only uh, the transactions structured on the basis of PSO, uh, imp imports of PSO, we can issue Sukuk up to 160 billion rupees. Okay. Use the imports of other petroleum companies it can be multiplied because a similar amount can be raised by structuring Sukuks on the imports of Paco. So this was a structure which has been proposed, it's being considered by the State Bank Central Sharia Board. So uh, we are keeping our finger crossed and we are hoping that uh, we can uh, soon roll out this kind of Sukuk and we are also pursuing State Bank of Pakistan and the Ministry of Finance to roll out a 12 month Ijara based Sukuk because that is also possible under the uh, Sharia compliant modes of Islamic finance. 
apart from that this is one recent sukuk which is a sukuk which is actually an islamic equivalent of commercial paper so this is the first ever islamic commercial paper in pakistan which has been arranged and advised by uh, mizan bank for hub power company limited it is it was a 2.5 billion rupees sukuk issue the structure was based on musharaka which is means it does not mean the musharaka i, I mean here not the diminishing musharaka but the shirkatul aqd based musharaka in which there is a contractual arrangement between the two partners for sharing profit and losses so there is a musharaka we identified one generating set or one generating unit of uh, hapco and we entered into a musharaka on that and the musharaka investment came from the sukuk holders in cash and from hapco in kind in the form of its assets which were contributed to the musharaka and then that musharaka the purpose of that musharaka was to sell electricity to wabda under the power purchase agreement and then it will earn revenues from from wabda by selling that electricity over a period of 6 months time and at the end of 6 months what will happen that we will develop we will work out a profit and loss account for the musharaka and on the basis of the pre agreed profit and loss sharing ratios and we have set the profit and loss sharing ratios for different profit levels that there is a profit ceiling amount below that there are different profit sharing ratio and above that there is different profit sharing ratio uh, the sukuk holders will get their share of profit and hapco will get its share of profit and after that to exit from the musharaka arrangement and to redeem the sukuk the sukuk holder will sell their musharaka share in the musharaka asset at the fair net asset value of the asset and the basis for determining the net asset value was the accounting book values of those asset after depreciation for the relevant period now coming to the next step which is the standardization of the interbank market so that was the first step to develop first to bring in a uh, lot of uh, short term corporate and gop sukuk in the market so that there is an adequate consistent supply of sukuk and then to ensure that there is a credibility uh by the uh, by the existence of secondary market in pakistan the second second issue is the the second solution for addressing the challenge is the standardization of interbank products uh there is a acute need to standardize the legal documentation the sharia uh, uh sharia concept the process steps and the related documents in consultation with the islamic banking industry uh, the project must be led by the state bank of pakistan to harmonize these products which are already being practiced some of these are not probably the islamic equivalent of repo has to be developed but uh, for call lending and borrowing the, in the conventional terms we are using musharaka mudarba and wakala, wakala placement models there is a new uh, tra- uh, product which has been rolled out uh, developed initially by mizan bank definitely being utilized by other banks which was sukuk be modal commodity murabaha was one product which has been criticized in pakistan a lot so probably we may drop that product or we need to refine that product in consultation with the state bank of pakistan so that that we can have a standard document of that approved product and we need to work out islamic equivalent for repo so that once these short term instruments are available we can do repo transactions uh, then this is a very important solution for addressing the challenges which is the financier of last resort currently the conventional bank have a facility to go to the state bank of pakistan to borrow funds at the current current rate is 13 and a half percent so they can borrow from the state bank discount window at 13 and a half percent or they can also place their surplus liquidity in state bank of pakistan at the same window at a floor rate of 10 and a half percent currently islamic financial institutions don't have that facility but there is a need to develop that facility because this is extremely critical for islamic bank because it poses a major liquidity risk especially the borrowing thing because we don't have a lender of last resort right now now the the last thing which is the cross border linkages which is very important for the development of the islamic banking markets across the globe across all different regions these are regions the far eastern regions which are fairly developed regions now but my comment here is that cross border linkages are definitely important but we need to first put our own house in order we need to resolve all those issues which has which i have thus just, just discussed to move on with the globalization thing because if our own house is not in order it doesn't make sense to be to think about creating cross border linkages although there's lot of good work being done on the cross border linkages and state bank of pakistan 
is a member to those institutions which are working on the cross border linkages. One is the International Islamic Financial Markets which is a global standard setting body for standardization of Islamic interbank products. And there is a, a recently an international Islamic liquidity corporation has been established in Malaysia uh, which will be rolling out uh, a short term dollar sukuk followed by a short term euro sukuk uh, probably by the end by the mid of next year. So, this is one other initiative which is taking place on the global uh, front, but definitely there are challenges uh, as identified these challenges are identified by the IFSB. I have picked that diagram from there and definitely there when you go cross border then you have tax issues, then you have legal framework issues because some countries operating on Anglo Saxon system, some countries operating on French legal system, some is operating on the American legal system. So, tax issues, legal issues, Sharia interpretation issues, foreign exchange controls issues. So, all these issues need to be addressed. So, it is a, it's a it's something which need to be taken care of by at least the domestic capital markets in Islamic capital markets in Pakistan at a later stage. So, that is end from uh, this is it from my side. Now, on the basis of uh, this presentation and the uh, concept of the treasury management and Sharia compliant instrument, we will have a short panel discussion, we will we'll be open to take your questions as well on an ongoing basis. Thank you for this presentation from my side and as soon as we open up our panel discussion, we will be willing to take questions uh, during the discussion and after the discussion inshallah. Assalamu alaikum everyone. So, I think yeah, you have already been introduced. So, there is no need to introduce uh, you and most of you are already known uh, personalities in the Islamic financial industry. Uh, so, I will quickly jump to the uh, question and answer session to, uh, to, to take care of the timing issue as well because probably we are running late. So, I will post my first question to Zahid that as a treasurer of Dubai Islamic Bank, uh, on a day to day basis what tools uh, you are applying uh, in managing your asset and liability position and liquidity risk. Mike. Assalamu alaikum. Firstly, I would like to thank the management for giving me the chance to contribute. In, the, in this convention by inviting me. <coughs> Before I start uh, telling you what Islamic banks do in asset liability management and liquidity management, I would like take a couple of minutes to explain what ideally happens in a conventional bank. In, I, in a perfect scenario, uh, in a conventional bank, what happens is that the perfect transfer pricing transfers the entire balance sheet of the bank to the treasury. <coughs> How does this happen? If a branch in the bank books an asset of one year, immediately it will place that asset with, uh, uh, borrow those funds for one year with the treasury and the treasury will have a similar asset on its book. Uh, by transferring all the assets and liabilities, the entire balance sheet of the bank is transferred to the treasury in a conventional bank. Why is this done? Because the treasury has access to the market. The treasury is the custodian for the market risk view uh, where the interest rates are going to go and what the liquidity situation of the market is like. In this way, by imposing mismatch limits on the, on the treasury itself, Treasury can manage the ALM portfolio of the bank and the day to day liquidity of the bank. <coughs> this entire process I think in the perfect sense is run by only two banks that I know of in the market. One is uh, Citibank and one is Standard Chartered Bank. Uh, the rest of the banks are not uh, going through this entire process in some conventional banks. Some of this is applied and some of it is not applied. In Islamic banks, the whole process would be futile. Why would it be futile? Because 
once you transfer the entire balance sheet of the Islamic bank to the treasury, how do you cover the risk of the balance sheet? Because in conventional, for conventional banks, there are instruments in the market that are available to cover the interest rate risk of the balance sheet and the liquidity risk of the balance sheet. <coughs> in Islamic banks, we don't have that luxury. We don't have instruments in the market that will cover or hedge any profit raised risk that the Islamic bank is facing. So you can, you can cover market risk from two angles. One is once the asset is booked, after the asset is booked, you can cover the market risk. Uh, in market risk, I am including profit rate risk. That is the rate of uh, the risk of interest rates moving up and down, and liquidity risk. Uh, that y you might be caught into a liquidity crunch if you are lending long term and you have short term deposits, and you have running a mismatch on your balance sheet. So you can either run it at uh, the market end, uh, manage it at the market end, or you can manage it at the start of the transaction. So what Islamic banks are currently doing or what DIB is currently doing is we are managing the interest rate risk uh, or the profit rate risk of the bank and the liquidity risk of the bank by controlling the approvals of product structures and, get up and applying limits on, on particular products that you're approving. So in that way, to some extent, the balance sheet risk of the bank is being covered. This, uh, this entire process is, can be done on your ALM portfolio. Uh, let me explain uh, the ALM portfolio. Say if I have 12, bi 12 billion worth of deposits and I have 9 billion worth of assets. So 9 billion would be my ALM, ALM portfolio and 3 billion left over would be my liquidity for daily management. So when you're talking about your ALM portfolio, you can cover the, partially cover the risks, market risk that the ALM portfolio is exposed to by approving the product structures that, that are preferable or that are matching to your deposit base and uh, applying uh, notional limits or to the, to the amount of products that you can uh, finance. When you come to daily liquidity, Islamic banking sector is facing a huge problem in daily liquidity. Because from the start, the Islamic banking sector is 100% liquid. There is not a window in this market, there is not a bank in this market that is, that is boring. So the, even currently, uh, on 30th December, the total deposits of the Islamic banking sector were 390 billion. And uh, on 30th June, the deposits were 447 billion. Okay. In this okay. entire period, the total advances of the country were 3.49 billion on 30th December. And on 30th June, they were 3.41 billion. Great. The total advances of the country have actually gone down. Yeah. Uh, because we are again going through a global recession and banks are being conservative. So whether conventional banks are, conventional banking market is liquid or not, the Islamic banking market is extremely liquid and has been liquid. Despite the fact that State Bank has come up with uh, the three-year Ijara Sukuk and they have issued 224 billion worth of... Uh, right here, I will take a question from Adil, connecting your comment, that uh, uh, Adil, what practical challenges uh, the Islamic banks are currently facing in managing their surplus liquidity as identified by Zahid. Well, as you have mentioned in your presentation, the biggest challenge is to strike the efficiency in managing your asset and liability. And whatever is happening around this uh, terminology is, is our problem. Zahid has mentioned that there are shortages of product. We don't have the luxury of all the products that has been offered in the conventional banking. And similarly, we have a standard, standardization problem among the industry itself. That is our own industry. 
if you see since the beginning we, it's a very very small industry five banks few uh, stand alone operations a very very small chunk of uh, uh, players right but initially when it grows up there was a harmony in players among themselves they were working together they have uh, interacted together the market was uh, i think some sort of active market but in the middle ages since 2008 you see the industry was clearly divided into two types of players one dealing with the conventional banking and others which were not so the the actual market size further diminished so now whatever left with us in today to day liquidity management is first and foremost scarcity of product standardization and availability of more scope you see since october 2010 government have come up with 180 billion worth of scope till i think the last issue is are right so they have get uh, some up to 180 billion existing portfolio outstanding to 224 billion first maturity is falling in this month yeah so now we need to have a consistency and continuity in that portfolio right whether we agree or not last couple of years the growth of islamic banking industry owes to just two products initially it was commodity muraba and subsequently the robust issue of second chapter of ijara suku so if these two products are available we can see the growth we can see at least the middle to long term liquidity absorption in the market but as far as the short term liquidity management is concerned absolutely zaid was right we are say, facing a huge huge problem from here uh, hoti saab can you uh, can you share your experience because you are working in in a fairly big bank which is askari bank and you are heading the islamic bank of window there so in any way are uh, are your window has more products or it's more, it's more convenient for you to manage your surplus liquidity being part of a conventional bank or you faces the same challenges as stand alone banks are facing um well as an islamic windows uh, islamic banking branches you are aware that the state bank has uh, regulations where we have put firewalls between the islamic banking uh, division and the rest of the bank so practically it's like a, a strategic banking uh, business unit a bank within a bank so our issues primarily are exactly the same as that of a conventional bank there are certain differences though the differences are that uh, not so much for liquidity because when we have excess funds there's nothing that our uh, the conventional treasury can do yeah. with it we place the funds with our uh, islamic treasury and the islamic treasury then faces exactly the same challenges as uh, the uh, treasury of a full fledged islamic bank on the placement side however when we have to borrow funds okay. uh, on that side uh, there is an advantage because we have ready access to our uh, conventional treasury okay. we can uh, have our conventional treasury place funds with us in an islamic mode right. uh, and that is very easily accessible to us as compared to any other bank that poses challenges for us also right. because as you know a lot of people think that islamic banking is not truly islamic then for an islamic banking branches or an islamic window it becomes even more controversial because they say how are you islamic when your equity comes from the conventional bank and when your uh, partly some funding also comes from the conventional bank okay. to that i answer uh, and i'll say this in urdu if i may here ali i ke uh, rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ne yahudiyon ke sath bhi karobar kiya so it's okay to deal with the conventional bank provided you deal with it on right. an islamic okay. mode good uh, good input from your side hoti saab uh, here ali i like to have your opinion that uh, having uh, we all know all these challenges being faced by islamic banks and liquidity management in your view how these challenges of liquidity management are impacting the growth and sustainability of the islamic banking industry in pakistan uh, thanks firstly thanks for inviting me over here uh, to start off with liquidity risk management is certainly a challenge for the islamic banks <laughs> on 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 account of lack of short dated instruments in in the market and all of us we all of us over here have some work to do in this regard 
Uh, however, dynamics have changed a bit since the issuance of large uh, three-year floating rate GOP Jara Sukuk in, 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 uh, in, in the last one year. If you look at some of the numbers, and I'll share some of the numbers with you, uh, about 43% of, of uh, Islamic bank deposits are right now invested in, in GOP Jara Sukuk. And if you look at all the SRR eligible assets that, uh, that, uh, that uh, Islamic banks have, that will constitute about 50% of, of Islamic uh, bank deposits, which is quite a sizable number. So I, I would suggest and I, would, I, I, I think there is a need to diversify some of the assets in, in some other areas as well, perhaps more aggressively look at the uh, uh, private sector. So, so there is a huge chunk of, uh, of uh, Islamic deposits which are already invested in GOP Jara Sukuk. So that's, I think we need to keep that in mind. Uh, uh, but again, I mean, there, there goes without saying that there, there is a challenge on, on the uh, liquidity risk management side because of lack of short dated instruments. Now, another thing I would like to mention over here is that you, you might be aware the State Bank, when, when GOP Jara Sukuk was introduced, uh, state bank impose certain holding limits on, on on the maximum amount that can be held by banks. Now the objective of that was to, to make sure that there is no concentration and, and, and to ensure that the liquidity is fairly widespread. Uh, now we have eased that, that restriction for Islamic banks and, 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 and we can see that th there is no concentration, there is no cornering of liquidity and, and the distribution of, of GOP Jara Sukuk is fairly widespread. Right. Thank you, Thank you, Ali, for your input. Here, Ayub Saab, can you uh, share, based on your research and experience, uh, are the Islamic banks in the other regions like GCC and Far East facing similar challenges in managing li their liquidity, or they have developed some better tools for that? Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. <clears throat> I think uh, before discussing the challenge in other regions, particularly UAE, uh, I mean uh, the Khalij countries and the Far East. Uh, before that, I would say that first we see what is the flexibility uh, available to those and uh, what uh, challenge our banks are facing. Particularly, I think that uh, keeping in view the inaugural session discussion that uh, we listened today, I think that uh, uh, the basis uh, of Islamic banking uh, with respect to its Sharia compliance is, in my view, the purest in Pakistan. I am saying this uh, on the reason uh, that uh, when we see Far East, they are by then sale of debt is allowed. And as uh, Mr. Sayyid Arkali was saying, there is a um, MATP. Basically, they are a liquidity uh, instrument or, uh, that is based on the uh, commodity murabha. Similarly, uh, in UAE, although IOFI and uh, OIC uh, uh, FIC Academy have declared the commodity murabha un-Islamic, even then a, large of, a lot of commodity murabha has been conducted. Similarly, uh, uh, during the last two years, uh, even the swaps and the uh, total return swaps and the uh, options and all these things have been developed and provided to Islamic banks in uh, both uh, in uh, the Khalij and in the Far East area that both products are not available to uh, our Islamic banks. And I understand that this is not a, uh, any uh, what we can call uh, problem. What I want to say is that uh, as uh, my colleague, uh, State Bank colleague Muhammad Ali was saying that uh, already 40, about 40 percent of Islamic banks' uh, deposits are being invested in uh, government sukuk. So next what we should do as banker is that we, effort has to be made that we invest in other than uh, liquid. As uh, Justice Taki Hafizahullah was saying, that money is not our core, core, uh, core business. You have to keep in view only the mismatch. And mismatch, actually, uh, you can uh, uh, manage this, provided 
uh, you have this intention and uh, even if uh, no more uh, sukuk are uh, in, uh, innovated for uh, for next two years i think uh, it should be sufficient how uh, uh, i would say that for short term yes there is need and for that uh, purpose uh, salam sukuk on which mizan bank are, is working that could uh, serve the purpose and particularly uh, salam sukuk are very important we see that in Bahrain, short term uh, salam sukuk for uh, one to three months are uh, being uh, used in Bahrain and that could be very useful. Uh, according to another uh, development, the, uh, the salam business as uh, we, have, uh, we have listened today uh, by the government of Punjab, I think uh, the bankers, uh, Islamic bankers and private developers uh, should approach the uh, government of Punjab to uh, have some uh, broader vision uh, so that uh, in, in, uh, in coming days we are able to get a short term uh, uh, instrument for uh, liquidity management. Thank you, Ayub sir. Uh, uh, talking further on the short term instrument. Uh, my question is to you, Zahid, that do you believe the current three-year floating, floating rate, GOP, Jara, Suku, in any way substitute the need for a short-term instrument for Islamic banks for liquidity management? And how important do you believe that the, this short-term instrument, three months, six months, uh, is, uh, is important for the liquidity management in Islamic banks? Uh, Amir, I just, uh, I just stated that the biggest problem that the Islamic bank, uh, banking sector faces is uh, excess liquidity from the start. Uh, so there is absolutely no question whether about the importance of a short term instrument in the market. There is a, there is a very, very strong need for the short term instrument. But like Mr. Salimullah stated in one of the earlier sessions today, that if the three year Ijara Sukuk were to be issued and regular periods like the PIB is being issued uh, every month there is an auction for table every fortnight there is an auction you will have a maturity ladder that right. will create short term instruments in the market by itself right right now right now let me uh, give you live figures Right now you have 9.5 billion maturing on 26th sep September. Right. So you have a four-day Government of Pakistan instrument in the market oh, yeah. which is available to because you. You have 7.3 billion maturing in 29 December. So you have a two-month instrument in the market which is available to the market right now. You have 21 billion maturing in 11th March 2012. So you have a less than one-year instrument trading in the market right now. But like you said in your presentation, there is so much liquidity in the market that these issues are not traded. Right. If I go to invest in these issues, I will not find a not seller. Find those issues, yeah. If I go to sell these institutions, I will find a lot of buyers. Yeah. Okay, so thank the, you. The, 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 the need for a short term instrument being in, uh, issued by the government of Pakistan okay. is very strong. In Here, I like uh, uh, Adil, you to uh, like there is a definitely challenge in liquidity management. But do you think that uh, the mutual funds and the equity market in Pakistan can be utilized by the Islamic banking industry for managing their surplus liquidity? Well, mutual fund, yes, of course, why not? Because there are products that, uh, that are built on Islamic uh, uh, principles offering income fund and even sovereign funds. Placing with them is as good as placing in the government of Pakistan. So uh, I, know, I, don't, I don't think so there is any, any, uh, any any, anything else to uh, think about placing with the mutual fund industry. It is established, it is stable and providing reasonable returns. But I think equity market is, is, is a bit more volatile for us, for the banking sector. And uh, currently the risk is too large to, to to cater with and I think in future if if the things goes well uh, market is stabilized you have a, a better understanding of the risk and how to mitigate it why not you can see that in future uh, Ali 
just to like sum up this session because we are running short of time. Uh, I like to have your views uh, from the state bank side. What is the state bank strategy for developing a vibrant sukuk market in Pakistan, the GOP sukuk market in Pakistan? What are the plans for rolling out a short term sukuk? And side by side, uh, what steps you suggest the State Bank of Pakistan and the Islamic banking industry should jointly take to um, develop or work out a Islamic discounting window facility or if there is one uh, coming out shortly or maybe in I do not know, but if there is some development happening on that please appraise on that as well. Yeah, uh, now State Bank of S State Bank of Pakistan feels that uh, regular and predictable issuance across different tenors is essential for the growth of the Islamic banking industry. So, the issuance of short term instruments is, 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 is critical, uh, but at the end of the day uh, we, are, we are looking at a few op options in this regard and hopefully we will have something on the table soon. But issuance of government paper comes under finance, however state bank will provide full support uh, in the issuance of short term GOP, Jara Sukuk in any way that it can. So, so again uh, there is no two way around it, we, we need a short term instrument and, and inshallah hopefully we will have something on the table soon. Now some of the steps that the state bank is taking to develop the secondary markets, uh, again we, uh, we have started uh, like, like we have for treasury bills and Pakistan investment bond, we have started to have an auction calendar for, uh, for GOP Jara Sukuk as well, hopefully we will be in a position to, have, to announce another calendar soon. Uh, so, so I think that I, I think having having a calendar uh, with pre predefined uh, auction target is critical, and it and uh, and we have seen that in case of PIBs and treasury bills, that process has improved market transparency and confidence. So, I think the similar st structure for Sukuk will also provide a similar impetus for the for the markets. Now, you uh, you might have also seen that when we launched uh, electronic trading platform in 2010. We have started, since then we have started dissemination of market data uh, to, 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 to the public on a daily basis about all the deals that are being done, which includes treasury bills, PIBs and also GOP, Jara Suku. We try to disclose as much information as we can about the prices which are going on and I think that disclosure of information is important for the, for, for the investors to, to have confidence in the market, to, 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 have, to, to have better assessment of what the prices are. And I think that that is important to, to uh, for for a wider investor base. I think going forward, our expectation from the market is that that the market will also come forward and develop some viable benchmarks for GOP Jara Sukuk, rather than State Bank coming down and 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 and, and saying that this is what no, what needs to be done. I think development of good benchmarks for uh, for, for for Jara Sukuk is very critical, so that banks can actually. Uh, start mark-to-market um, uh, market their debate portfolios. So I think that is critical and, and, and we have taken a first step, we have, we have started giving some kind of information on a daily basis about the deals that are being done against GOP Jara Sukuk. We would encourage the market to take the next step and, and, ha and develop some viable benchmarks. Uh, as far as some of the other steps that we do plan to take, uh, which, which probably will improve the secondary markets a bit more, I think what um, um, uh, all of you are familiar with, with e-bond system. We are trying to develop an interface between e-bond and RTGS so that all the deals that are done on, on, on e-bond automatically flow through to RTGS and are settled automatically. Obviously, GOP Jara Sukhu is, is also part of that. Uh, we are also trying, we are also developing uh, an electronic bond, uh, electronic auction system uh, in which nobody will, will be required to put in manual bids for auctions, so it will all be electronic and it would have interface with our RTGS, so once you put in the bid, it will automatically be settled. So uh, after, after once, once the auction is conducted, see these are some of the steps we have taken. Uh, you mentioned about the discount window, there are few proposals that we are, uh, that are under consideration with State Bank on that, but again we have to keep in mind that when we are an analyzing any such proposal. We have to see uh, see compliance to the state bank uh, the state bank act. Uh, we have to we we, we have to see the, that it is in compliance with the, your monetary policy framework. And and uh, but again, we are sure that within these, we will be able to 
develop some kind of a solution for uh, for providing this uh, facility to Islamic banks, which in in, in my, and I agree that the, this is very critical, and and having a discount window uh, or some form of a discount window, which which through which I, either we can uh, give funds to to the Islamic banks or maybe perhaps also borrow from them. I think that is very critical. But again, we have to develop it in a in a manner that is consistent with with the with the rules of the uh, with with the Act of State Bank. Uh, with with a monetary policy framework, and also the the structure should be airtight so that there is no reputational risk for the for the central bank. But I'm sure we we will find find a way for, way out for this. Thank you, Ali, for your Thank input. You. Now uh, I like to open the floor to take two questions because we are very short of time. So any two uh, very objective and directed question, please direct your question to the panelists. Any of the panelists you like to, even if you like to direct a question to me on my presentation. Uh, please. My name is Nasu Wahid. I'm just referring to it that in your presentation you referred that you have entered into a sukuk with Wabda, based with H, uh, with Habko and which they are going to uh, have a prior sale and uh, purchase with Wabda. Knowingly fully well that Wabda has been projected that about for uh, subsidy losses that have been projected by the government of Pakistan were 325 billion and which out of it 190 billion loss would be that of Wabda. How is it possible that you will earn profit out of that transaction? That means you would not be sharing the losses. Okay, this is a little more uh, question which need more uh, explanation to you. So I can explain that to you offline because that's relate to a particular very specific sukuk structure, uh, not to the uh, musharaka, but more to a credit risk of that sukuk, which has been rated by Pakra as AA plus. So definitely they have taken that into account by at the time of rating. But I can discuss that offline with you how we manage that and how Pakra manage that. Uh, uh, there's question from you, so. In your presentation, you had indicated that there is a problem with inter Sharia interpretation for uh, some treasury protein. So, what I knew about that uh, State Bank of Pakistan, they are standardizing the product structure and other related issues. And beside that, Sharia advisory forum is also working. Yeah. So, so far those uh, differences have not been resolved as yet? Uh, right now there are certain uh, standardization issues and the standardized agreement has to be rolled out and um, uh, if we have somebody from Islamic Banking Department, State Bank, we can have yes. their views and from the audience oh. as well that what is the status of that. But these things have to be standardized and industry has to put a thrust behind that because it's not the only central bank's job to do that. Mm -hmm do this, but it's an industry job also to work hand on hand statement of Pakistan because end of the day, the Sharia advisors sitting in the Sharia advisor forum uh, have to agree on a standardized document. So, so this, I, to, my, to the best of my knowledge, uh, standardized <coughs> agreement has not yet been rolled out. Zahid can add on that. I think what your confusion is uh, that uh, if Central bank has given a structure. Why is that not being followed by the entire market? That's what your question is. No, uh, my question was relating to his presentation. In, okay, right now, in which product we have is that my right interpretation from my the right Sharia now, perspective? Right now, every Islamic bank, every Islamic window has a different Sharia advisor, okay. and that different Sharia advisor has take one product for example Musharka. Every single advisor has his own opinion on the Musharka agreement. So you do not have a consensus across the board on dealing on what structure, what master hmm. agreement, what documents that are going to be used and what master agreement is going to be signed. 
I will give here, I will give here the example of Amir said that it's not only the responsibility of the central bank. I sort of disagree with that in a certain way. I will give the example of Bank Nigara in Maj Malaysia. Bank Nigara in Malaysia has taken the, the lead role in the Islamic banking sector with a, in, in accordance with ISRA. ISRA is an Islamic ins research institute and they advise Bank Nigara on pro product structures. Once Bank Nigara has approved a product structure and the documentation associated with the, with the product, no Sharia in the market is allowed to question it. Then that standard product document is being dealt with all Islamic banks in, in, in Malaysia. What we need here, what, what is an urgent need in Pakistan is to, to combine these Sharias under one roof. Whether the state bank does it or whether we do it outside the market, create a supreme Sharia council in which all the Sharia advisors are present. A forum or a Sharia council that, that sits in one place and gives the market standardized agreements. <coughs> standardized master agreements, standardized document for Musharka, for Wakala, for Commodity Muraba, all the Islamic products. This is, this is, the, this is the most urgent or mm. most important thing that is going to stop the, uh, the progress or the development of the interbank Islamic interbank market is standardization of products, lack of standardization of products. What is the strength of the conventional interbank market? The strength of the yeah. conventional interbank market is called lending is called lending with all banks. The master repo agreement is master repo agreement with all banks. FX forward is FX forward with all banks. FX swap is FX swaps with all banks. There is no differentiation of product. But in the Islamic banking sector, the scenario is totally different. So what we need is the same sort of standardization that is, that is being practiced in conventional interbank market uh, to be practiced in the Islamic market. Only then you will see development in the Islamic interbank market. Thank you, Zahid. I, I like to now conclude uh, this session, which is the last session for today. And uh, obviously, uh, based on the questions and the panel discussion and the presentation, we can fairly uh, conclude that the solution for, uh, for addressing the liquidity management challenge in the Islamic banking industry lies in standardization, uh, the active secondary market on which, uh, as Ali told, State Bank is aggressively working on, and the availability of short-term sukuk. So these are certain recommendations which should be noted down by the publicitas and then should definitely be uh, forwarded to the central bank and the uh, Sharia advisory forum of the uh, central bank, uh, which is basically managed by the central bank, it's not that of the uh, uh, central bank, it's, it's composed of the Sharia advisor from all banks. So thank you so much uh, for joining us.